Anna Felsown, and this is 4 for 4. Many are calling the 72nd annual Golden Globes a snooze fest because its hilarious host, Tina Fey and Amy Poehler, weren't on enough. Chris, are you one of the negative Nellies? Negative Nellies? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am one of the negative Nellies. I could have used a lot more Amy and Tina. It looked like after they did their, their initial monologue, it was just one boring act actor after another reciting boring words that it's were very written for them. To Benedict Cucumber Patch should not be allowed on television. That. <laughs> I don't even know what his. <laughs> I agree with you. They were the best part of the night, mm -hmm. so we definitely needed to see them more, or at least they needed to mix up the uh, awards, right. doling out the awards with a song or somebody performing because right. it became a little bit monotonous. Yeah. 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 They were more of an opening act than anything. I don't think they hosted the Golden Globes. They were just the opening act. You know who would host the Golden Globes? The one, the only, the uber-talented Neil Patrick Harris. That man can host all the award shows as far as I'm concerned. He draws you in, song and dance. That's what Hollywood's all about. Mm -hmm. it's magic. Yes. <laughs> Jeremy Renner had one of the night's most awkward moments when he commented on... Um, how to say this politely, mm. Jennifer Lopez's Globes. Oh. Carly, did Renner go too far? No, I thought this was funny. I mean, <laughs> Jennifer Lopez has an amazing body. She's proud of it. She didn't seem offended. And he said what everybody else was thinking, so I thought it was what a really funny. Everybody else was thinking. I was thinking it. I wasn't thinking that. I was. I, I mean, was they were they what? were very much on Chris, display. Let me ask you a serious question. What were they presenting? <laughs> well, uh, he was pretty much at eye level with them, so he couldn't really look away. So he kind of said what he had to say and moved on from that. But it was a little. Uh, and when you wear a dress like that, you're inviting. A, a little bit of chatter about you know Bingo. what what people are seeing. I agree. It's like the elephant or elephants in the room. I should say. <laughs> All right, we can give him a little bit of credit. But Jennifer Lopez owns it after year after year, and at 45, wow. Another cringy moment was when George Clooney professed his love to his new wife, Amal, on stage. Dorothy, was this very sweet of George or complete saccharine? Just too saccharine for my taste. His speech was really sincere and genuine, and I appreciated it. But then when he got to the part about a mall, it just seemed overdone. Like he was rubbing it in the faces of all those women out there, probably myself included, maybe you too, Diana. <laughs> I've never been asked loved him girl. for all these years, and now he's you know finally well, taken her, so he claims. But not even all the women out there. There must have been 20 women in that room who he's gone on dates with, let's right. say. And uh, he basically just told them that they're ugly and stupid. <laughs> and now he found a pretty smart girl, guys, and now he's finally happy. You guys are focusing on all the wrong things. First of all, this was a footnote in his speech. It was about two sentences long at the very end. They just got married. Allow him to have his blushing groom moment. Blushing groom. I don't know. I thought it was sweet. I look at this and, and I, I think, think it was a big deal. I think they're totally having a frenemy relationship with Brangelina and they're just trying to beat them and become the camel out of Hollywood. And I think we should look out to see if Clooney is going to run for political office because he is definitely setting the stage. You guys are haters. Hey. <laughs> We're truth tellers. And finally, red carpet style. Kali, who rocked it and who ruined it. Speaking of haters, Kira Knightley is my worst dressed winner. She was nominated for an award. She's pregnant. She has all these amazing things going on in her life. This could have been her red carpet fashion moment and she decided she wanted to look like a milkmaid. This dress totally milkmaid. aged her. She looked terrible. Maybe it was she such a bad day. She looks so happy. She's pregnant. You just right. said it yourself. You can look, ha to, you can look happy, but you're still model. wearing a bad dress. No, no, no. no. <laughs> the worst one out there was, unfortunately, presenter Tina Fey. She wore some sort of dress that was shaped like one of those uh, rings that are made of candy. and Ring like, pop. Ring pop. <laughs> she looked yes. like a ring she pop. She looked like a human ring pop. <laughs> no, sorry. I'm going to have to say Jennifer Aniston. It wasn't the dress itself that I hated so much, although I did hate the halter top and the sequins. It reminded mm. me of something I wore to a dance in high school. I actually had that dress for right. junior prom. Exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was more just the dress combined with the hair, combined with the earrings, combined with the shoes that we have seen her wear every single red carpet. Mm. It's not a surprise that she wore black because that's her style, but she has the money, she has the body. So she go, was just totally basic. Yeah, All go right, the extra my mile. worst dress is Amal Clooney. I'm sorry, but oh, that was supposed what? to be Audrey Hepburn. I know you're upset with me, but when she put on Grandma's gloves, she looked like she was a kid playing dress up. That's what we think about the Golden Globes. Tell us what you think on Twitter at Fox411. And go to fox411.com for our complete coverage of Hollywood's Big Night.